online engagement. As a researcher, you need to be findable and contactable. And in Armadale, we only ever run into UNE people when we're getting about. The online world lets us engage with the wider world. Which communication channels do you use to talk about your research? A 2016 survey showed that an awful lot of conversation goes on at conferences and meetings, but that's really just for an academic audience. For the general audience, a lot of chat goes on in places like Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Today we're going to plan our online presence, build an audience and learn about maintaining our presence. Planning an online presence. Your online profile will help you connect so that you can communicate and finally collaborate with others. You can disseminate your research, particularly to a broader audience, not just people who are researching in exactly your field. You'll be able to stay abreast of research being published and connect with lots of people. You can also use your online presence to obtain non-traditional metrics data. And you can use that when you're looking for a grant or academic promotion. You don't want to wait till you're going for a position as a lecturer, for example, and say, oh, I've just started to use the online world. You want to be able to say, I've been online, active online for five years. There's a librarian in Queensland called Kay, and she talks about a personal learning network. And it's not just about the online world, it can apply wider. And she has these, these axes. And if you take something like Twitter, you look at tweets, you're accessing the knowledge. You might retweet something and you're starting to share. You might comment and you might have a, a more in-depth conversation. And before you know it, you're curating or creating knowledge with others that you've met online. There are many tools out there that can help with your online presence. I don't know if you know all these logos. They fall in different places on this spectrum. Notice there's a bit of a gap around the accessing. They're generally more than just looking at information. It's about the sharing and then getting together with other people to have a conversation. Let's look at building your online presence. An ORCID ID is a minimum. If you're going to be a researcher, you need this unique identifier so your research doesn't get mixed up with someone with a similar name. ORCID IDs look really good in your UNE email signature. If we look at something like ResearchGate, you need to be careful of intellectual property so you might find your publisher owns the rights to your work, or at least for a time, might be embargoed. So you need to be careful what you're sharing about your own work. Publons is good if you're a peer reviewer, you want credit for that. And if you're from the humanities, you might want to look into humanities commons. When we're online, we're creating, disseminating, managing and tracking. Keeping a blog is a great way to create content. You get more than the characters that you get on, say, Twitter. You, it's more relaxed conversation. You can embed videos and images. When we're disseminating, you might want to use something like Twitter to tell people, hey, I've got a new blog post. 
if it all becomes a bit much, there are tools to help you manage your online content. I used to use Hootsuite. I now find it a little expensive, but I'm looking into every post. And you want to know if your online presence is having any impact. You could have a look at something like Impact Story, Kudos or Altmetric to see how your online presence is tracking. Research blogs are a great way to get out information, especially if you want to get your ideas across to the man in the street. I've got a blog. It's not a research blog. It's an education blog. I know getting a following can be hard. I'm struggling to get those people over there to, to follow my blog. When I make a blog post though, I make it easy on myself. I use tools like If This Then That, IFTTT, and that will automatically tweet any time I put up a blog post. I choose WordPress and one reason is WordPress is indexed by things like Google. So that's going to bring you recognition. Something you might want to use your blog for, relevant news. Even if you talk about things that are happening in your field, maybe not to you, but out in the wider world, you might want to share links, events, publications certainly that you're working on but be careful of the intellectual property you don't want to give away too much you might want to talk about projects papers or presentations that you've made when you're putting out your messages they need to be timely you, I don't want to hear about this great idea that you had 12 months ago I want to know as you're having the idea if you're on multiple platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, SlideShare, perhaps post at the same time or maybe the same day. It'll look funny if you put out the same message and stagger it. Someone following you is going to go, oh, she's telling me again about the new video she's made. So maybe at, keep the timing close together and maybe change the message to suit the platform. For example, Twitter is quite conversational, LinkedIn's professional, and a blog is more in depth. Don't make it all about you. I know I have actually unfollowed a very influential educator because she kept talking about what she was eating and where she was going and what the kids were up to. Don't be that person. I asked one of UNE's prominent researchers if I could use a few screenshots from her Twitter and I knew the best way to contact her would be Twitter. I knew she'd respond and she did. Mary, I had a look at her Twitter account and I could see she's pinned a tweet. She's going to a very prestigious event so she's pinned the post so that it doesn't just slip away down the Twitter stream. She's tagged Al Gore, prominent, in, prominent environmentalist and by doing that it may not have been her intention but he may retweet this this post of Mary's and bring her thousands of followers. I watch the ABC's Q&A on Monday nights and they have a bit of a tweet up. And if I see a really clever tweet by someone there on my TV screen, I'll actually go and follow them. So that's a challenge for you. See if you can say something really clever on the next Q&A and see how many followers you pick up. I'd love to know the answer. Mary's also posted a really good thing here. I love that she's made science simple. 
the man or woman on the street can understand this. It's got this great graphic, no statistics. It's all visual, very followable. I had a look at another one of our academics and I got his permission to use a screenshot. I love Tim's profile on the UNE profiles pages. If you haven't looked, go and see if all your information is up on the UNE website. I love Tim's profile because it's got a Twitter handle and ORCID ID, so his work's not going to get confused with someone else's. It's got all, and it's got all the publications that he's published. It's, it's a really good example of a, a UNE profile. I talked about managing your online pr profile. It doesn't need to be daunting. I am on many platforms and I'm following things and I'm posting things and I have found something like Hootsuite to be helpful in just keeping an eye on this dashboard of everything going on. However, you might want to use something like impact story. You might want figures of what impact am I having on the conversations? And that may be handy when you go for a promotion. There's a product called Kudos or Grow Kudos. And it starts with explain your work in simple terms. Here we are, someone's explaining his work in simple terms. And here's a, what you don't want to do. Don't overwhelm the people. Don't have it hard on the eyes. There's a lot of black text on white writing and I can't read it all. There's figures and percentage symbols and I'm starting to freak out just a little bit. On Kudos, you have all your metrics, you, you know what impact you're having online. And on altmetric.com, there are various ways of looking at your impact. You've got a summary page and then each tab, there's news and Twitter. So we can get a good picture of what's going on in your research world. I have a landing page. It's like a free home page and the website's called about.me. So it's about me. I just made a little statement about who I am, what I do for a living or what I've done for a living in the past. Maybe a bit of bragging about my education or my interests and then links to the social media platforms that I'm on. So there's a link to my WordPress blog. I spend no time updating this page, only if I change jobs, for example, because all the work I do will be over on WordPress, over on Instagram. So those links on this page do not change. Here's a message for you. You have an online presence and a way to manage, disseminate and track content. But you only have to use platforms you're comfortable with that you want to use. If you're not a Twitter person, that's fine. My colleague Eleanor suggests you try something like Twitter for one month, give it your best shot. If you find you're not having any impact, do a bit of research, find out what other tool might be better for you. This is part three, maintaining your online presence. I went online this morning and I found that I had the same profile pic in, on two platforms, on Google Scholar and LinkedIn, but I had a different one on Twitter. I jumped in, changed my Twitter one. I've now standardized it. I think it's going to take me a while to track down all the different versions. You don't have to use a picture of you. You could use a symbol, like if you work over in paleontology, you might have a picture of rocks or dinosaurs. 
outdoors or something. It could be a symbol of you. But if you use your photo, you'd be amazed at conferences. People will go, I know you. You're that person who writes about X, Y, Z. When you're making your research available, think about Research UNE, our platform. It talks to platforms such as altmetric.com, I think was the one. It slipped my mind. So there's, there's lots of good reasons to use Research UNE. There are places where you can write. It doesn't have to be your blog. Set up your profile on something like The Conversation and they may contact you and say, oh, I see you talk about fossils. Could you come do an article for us? And build your community. Build your community through your personal learning network. Don't forget UNE does have policies about what you say online. You are representing the organisation. And you might want to check out some other do's and don'ts from a couple of other organisations. We've learned how to plan, build and maintain your online presence. Be selective with your profile. You don't want multiple profiles with multiple pictures. Be active. I followed a, someone on Twitter the other day. Turns out he hasn't tweeted for about four years and I have this feeling, oh, what if he's passed away? Don't forget to get your ORCID ID or your ORCID. Use your online accounts to make your research available. Standardise your messages to an extent, but customise them for different platforms. Make a landing page. It doesn't need to cost any money. Be a content curator. There are tools that let you put stories together and push those out. Disseminate content, content for academic and non-academic purposes. Look after your content. If you need to delete a tweet or something, you know, take good care, do, do maintenance where needed. Use the tools to track your impact, stay professional and engage with your community. Don't hesitate to contact the librarians at UNE. Your research librarian can help you set up and maintain your prof profile. As I said earlier, get your online presence sorted now and in five years you'll be going for academic promotion and you'll be able to say, I've been blogging, posting, tweeting for several years. Do contact us at the library if you need any more information.